What's happening, everybody? Welcome into the Pack-A-Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. We wrapped up the very first preseason game of the year, really kind of the kickoff to the 2021 season. Packers lose 26 to 7, and it does not matter at all. This game had absolutely nothing to do with result. I'd be saying the exact same thing if they won 40 to nothing or lost 40 to nothing or anything in between. They did have a 7 to 3 lead at one point before the Houston Texans ripped off 23 unanswered points, but again, it matters absolutely none at all. It just doesn't matter one iota. But uh this game was of course about Jordan Love and his first appearance as a member of the Green Bay Packers. Remembering that this is his first time that he's played in over 600 days. Uh, he has yet to even wear a green and gold jersey. Remember, he was not active all last year. Obviously, just wearing the red jersey and, and practice every day. So this is this was all about love and how he performed in this game, especially even more so when we get the the players who are missing. And there were 30 players missing from this game due to injury or just you know kind of precautionary reasons, but. Again, this was always going to be about Jordan Love and lots to like, I think, overall. I think the biggest thing is this is this was a really nice baseline start for Jordan Love. And that, you know, Matt LaFleur did a great, you know, mentioned after the fact that you know, the Texans basically played two defenses, man defense and cover two. This is why you can't take anything away from preseason. There's not a ton of defense reading that Jordan Love has to do and things like that. But at the end of the day, he goes 12 of 17, 122 yards, one touchdown, no picks, does have the one fumble. And overall, you have to kind of feel good about what Jordan Love put on tape in totality. Now, the the pessimist may say, again, this is a poor team, it's preseason, and again, they're playing two different defenses basically the entirety of the game. Does have the fumble where he got a little bit deep in his drop, as noted by Matt LaFleur in the press conference after the game. You can look at those 122 yards and say, well, one was a little bit of a, you know, kind of a poor throw to Devin Funches that Funches bailed out with a ridiculous one-handed catch. The 22-yard touchdown to Kylan Hill was basically the offensive line and the and really the play by Kylan Hill. It didn't really have anything to do with love. You know, you could point to some of those sort of things. Uh, even the Sternberger play, it basically ended up with Sternberger being wide open in, in the secondary. But put all the stats to the side and put even the results to the side. What I was looking for in this game from Jordan Love was process. I was looking at how he commanded the huddle. Was he able to get everyone lined up the right way? Were they able to run the plays successfully? You know, was he able to make some checks at the line of scrimmage? Could he get in and out of just everything that they were trying to do with really no miscues? And outside of a fourth down play where he, you know, meant to fake what right and he goes left or vice versa, whatever it was, outside of that, I thought he showed great command, great control, great poise. And you know, on the first drive of the game, you have the little, you know, smoke screen to Malik Taylor. My guess, I don't know for sure, but my guess is that's one of those plays that we've seen from Aaron Rodgers and this Packers offense numerous times where, you know, he steps up to the line of scrimmage, probably has a run called, notice that the cornerback's playing, you know, off of Malik Taylor and throws a, a quick smoke screen to, to Taylor and, you know, he picks up four or five yards on the play. Just having that wherewithal. Again, I don't know for sure. Maybe that's what's called, but I'd be shocked if it is because if that's the only thing on that play and the corner plays up, you're screwed, right? So it had to have been kind of that, you know, a run play with a, a smoke screen check and he got to that perfectly. Um, a little bit later, he, you know, he chat, you know, or, you know, kind of, uh, you know, calls out of a, um, a play at the line of scrimmage, checks out of it, gets to a new play call. So those were the sort of things I was looking at. And again, besides the, the the missed bootleg and kind of going in the wrong direction, everything that I saw from a process standpoint was pretty darn good. Even on that play, right? Even on that play, I thought he showed good, you know, wherewithal in a in a horrible situation where he can't run for it, he can't take a sack, he can't just throw it away. It's fourth down. The only thing you do in that situation is give your team a chance. He threw it up to the tallest guy on the roster and hoped that he would go up and make a play. It actually ends up hitting Funches in the hand. 
I don't think Funchess expected it to get through two Texan defenders, uh, but I think if Funchess maybe goes up with two hands on that, I think he might have a chance. But either way, I thought this was a really good start for Jordan Love. I think it puts a really good baseline on tape of where he can kind of go from here. And I think you have to be pleased as both the Packers and Packer fans with what Love did in that game. Now, again, if we're being pessimistic again, it was really the one drive where I think he went six of six or something like that, you know, for the majority of the yards and and the rest of the game was a lot of, you know, three and outs and, you know, stuff that just didn't get in a good rhythm. So you want to see some of those drives where he gets a little bit more in a rhythm. Matt LaFleur mentioned something similar where he doesn't want love thinking and aiming so much on his throws. And he mentioned the one where Funchess made the ridiculous one-handed catch over the middle. And he just wants it to him to rip it. And I think there's definitely examples of that. But I think if you're if you're looking, you know, negatives versus positives in this game, there were a lot more positives than negatives. And I think if if I would have told you going into this game that Love goes 12, 17, 122 yards, touchdown, no interceptions, and overall that he had solid poise, commanded the offense, no major issues, anything like that, I think everyone would have been pretty pleased with that result. So is he is he ready to start and be the, the guy and everything like that? No, but again, for a young quarterback making his first start in over 600 days and the first start on any sort of NFL level, even if it is an exhibition, I think you take that. And the only downside here is it sounds like Love got a little bit banged up on that strip sack. Um, look, you know, he was kind of like ready to torque it and he gets hit and it sounds like he tweaked uh, his shoulder a little bit on his throwing shoulder. So they sit him the rest of the game. It sounds like they were originally planning on playing him three quarters. Instead, he only goes two. Benker gets the rest of the game. So that'll definitely be something to keep an eye on uh, this coming week to see if, you know, if he needs to miss any time, would he miss a game? Love did mention after the fact that he thought this was more precautionary and that he's, you know, it felt like he would be able to play next week. But of course we know, the Packers and their training staff are going to be more cautious with that, especially in preseason. And if if they feel like he could aggravate something or anything like that, I think they'll definitely go with Kirk Bankard in that situation. And if Love can't go, I would, you know, I'd be keeping an eye out for probably Jake Dolagala, but maybe Blake Bortles uh, coming back since they were in, you know, mini camps and OTAs earlier this offseason. So that'll definitely be worth keeping an eye on. But I think, again, you have to be pleased with how Love performed in his first game overall. On the flip side, one player that did not perform up to expectations or I mean, frankly, I guess what we should come to expect at this point and who's not had a good camp uh, during training camp is Josh Jackson. And he came out and he really struggled again. They targeted him three times on the first drive. He gives up three completions. At one point, they targeted him seven times. He gave up six completions. And even the incompletion, I've seen, I saw it up in the press box, so I didn't get a great look at it. I saw some people say that he deflected it. The referee on the play looked like he was saying that it was uncatchable, which made me to believe that they were maybe going to call a penalty on him, except they deemed it uncatchable. Either way, it doesn't matter that specific play. Overall, Jackson was really poor in this game. He did have the one pass breakup, you know, right in the red zone, right before the end zone. Uh, but even then, he gets a little bit grabby on the play, which has been something that's really plagued him. This is his fourth season now. He's had playing time in different seasons. They played him outside, left corner, right corner, slot corner, safety, punt returner, special teams. He hasn't been good enough at any of it. And I think this was honestly a a fairly decent final nail in the coffin for Josh Jackson. Now he has two games, unless he gets cut in the first cut down this week. Uh, he has two games yet to go and prove himself and try to show why he still deserves a roster spot. But to me, there's five players that are you know are going to make this team at corner, including Jair Alexander, Eric Stokes, and then um, Chandon Sullivan, of course, uh, Kevin King, and probably Shamar Jean Charles. At least probably one spot. And again, with Jackson not being a core special teams guy, he had a punt return in this game and it, it just looked slow. There was another play too in coverage where they were running a post on him and the quarterback didn't see his receiver, but he, he just is it is just is like fundamentals and his just body and like everything. It just it's not there. He's not a good cover guy. And I think that showed up. This is not 
Deshaun Watson to DeAndre Hopkins, like the, you know, the, like a, a couple of years ago, maybe against the Texans, right? This was not Brady to Mike Evans. This was Davis Mills and you know Kuti. Like the, it, this was not. I I don't know. This was just not a great performance from Josh Jackson, and he needs to be better. And he probably has two weeks to go out and show he can be better, or we're probably going to be seeing the last of Josh Jackson. I thought Kylan Hill, somebody I've been, you know, kind of hyping up a little bit, you know, wasn't great on the kick returns, to be fair. I didn't think he had a great um, opportunity. He had like the five yard run to begin with. And then just everything was like, basically there was just no running lanes. But I think on the 22 yard screen pass, I think we finally got a glimpse as to what, or at least people that haven't been at camp got a glimpse of exactly what Kylan Hill can be about, you know, better blocking would have been nice on the day. Uh, but I, I think, you know, that again, just goes to show you what we've been seeing in camp. And it's just kind of a microcosm of how he's looked so far. And, you know, he did have the potential missed exchange with Kirk Bankert. So certainly things weren't perfect here for Kylan. But again, I think that the flash play was there to show you what he's capable of moving forward. Uh, Devin Funches is a big game for him, right? Six catches, 70 yards. Again, results not necessarily as important here, but I thought the big thing was, uh, if you're looking for some fear for Devin Funches, like Devin Funches normally doesn't play well into the third quarter, right? Like they're evaluating him to see if he's going to make the team or not. I think that's fair to say. Now with him missing two seasons of football, just kind of getting back in game shape and things like that, I think is probably important too. But overall, there was a major difference in the wide receivers in this game. Funches looked like the polished veteran of everyone that looks like he's ready to go out and play Everyone else, even the Amari Rogers, the Malik Taylor, you know, the rest of the guys on the roster that that were active in this game, just didn't have that same level of polish at wide receiver. Now, again, whether they need that at that number six wide receiver spot is debatable. Whether he's going to make the team certainly still debatable. But I thought overall, if you're trying to compare the wide receivers, there was a distance between Funchess and the rest of the group at wide receiver in this game. KB Nento, my guy, comes up with another big interception, or I guess a big interception. I can't say another, but this is a guy who showed ball skills from his very first day at training camp two years ago, and he's continued to show those ball skills ever since. Made the roster last year, of course, and then had to go on IR, and then this year he comes back and he, he you know, he looks like he's ready to compete for that number six corner spot again. He's going to have to be, you know, good on special teams, but these are the type of plays that help you at another kind of pass breakup play later in the game. Now, this is a really nice step in the right direction for Ento. Oren Burks, I think this is maybe the best that he played. He did have a big roughing the passer penalty, but I just love that he was playing fast and confident. That's the first time I've seen Oren Burks play fast and confident. And that's a huge step in the right direction for him. Now, what that means and what he can become let's pause and let's see how the rest of camp and preseason goes and things like that. But I think he showed there's, there's a chance that he's, you know, the number three linebacker here uh, behind Devondre Campbell and Chris Barnes. It might be Oren Burks is at number three, or at least very much he's in that conversation. Offensive struggles were the other big thing here. I think maybe the, the, the other big disappointment was just the overall play of the offensive line. You know, there was some protection breakdowns, but just no running alleys. And I thought Yash Nyman really struggled, I, you know, and for an offensive line where a lot of players, you know, Lucas Patrick and Ben Braden and Josh Myers and John Runyon Jr. and Dennis Kelly, you know, like there, there's guys who are, are going to be counted on this season, got a decent amount of playing time and, and the offensive line play just wasn't good enough at the end of the third quarter, at least at one point, either in the third or fourth, they had 17 carries for 17 yards. That's just not good enough for that group of players. And, you know, even when the backups came in, this offensive line is supposed, the depth of the old line is supposed to be a strength. And again, they lost in the trenches all day long. So that was a disappointment. And then last but not least, the injuries from this game. Jordan Love, of course, has the shoulder injury. Uh, Tompkins went out, looked like he maybe hurt his shoulder, did not come back. Devin Funches made his way to the locker room. It looked like after he was kind of done for the day anyway, was high-fiving fans, didn't come back, but didn't seem like it was anything too serious. Then KB and Ento got checked for a concussion. It looked like that's what they were checking. And then he came back and returned and played later in the game. So he should be good to go moving forward. But Love, Tompkins, Funches will be worth keeping an eye on. At least those were the notable ones that we saw during the game. Overall, good performance from Love. I think some things to be positive about. I think some things that'll need to get cleaned up. Score doesn't matter. 
kind of go back to the the practice this week, get ready for the Jets, and you know, hope for a better outcome next week. But again, you're looking for process and players making a name for themselves. And hopefully we've got more Jordan Loves and Oren Burks and KB Nento stories next week and less of the Josh Jackson ones. But overall, I thought this was a solid first preseason game, all things considered, uh, even with the, the result the way that it was. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I always appreciate it. I'll be right back here tomorrow. So make sure to check it out and make sure to subscribe. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.